Um, guys, thanks for being here. I want to introduce uh, Cody Williams. Uh, we as an organization are super excited to have him join us. Um, his talent, his character uh, comes from a great family. Um, and I know he's excited to get to work. Got a little bit of work in today, mm -hmm. right? And um, we're just super excited to have him. So looking forward for you guys to get to know him. And um, they'll probably go easy on you, I would think, <laughs> your first one. But I'm here to help. I got okay? you. And uh, so let's open it up to questions. Uh, Cody, for jazz fans that maybe not be too familiar with your game, what do you think you're going to uh, bring this organization, and, and what do you think the expectations of you for this rookie season? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just versatility, especially to this you know young core that we have. I think the biggest impact I can make is on the defensive end. You know, we we're going through practice today, and you, we pulled up the numbers. You know, 30th in three-point you know attempts allowed, 30th like defensive percentage in the league last year. So. I feel like me coming in, especially as a rookie, with my length and my size, and you know my versatility, the best thing I can bring is you know on the defensive end. So it's kind of my focus. Hey Cody, uh, welcome to Salt Lake. Uh, curious, 19. That seems to be the norm now for young players in the league. But how important is it for you to maybe lean on your brother a little bit, uh, just to make the transition from from college to the NBA and. Uh, what have you already learned, maybe, from him in this process? Uh, yeah, I definitely learned him a lot, especially, you know, just how to handle certain situations, how it was for him going through, you know, his rookie year. But, you know, now I can also lean on my teammates. I can lean on guys like, you know, Keontae, who, you know, was a rookie last year. So he was in my shoes. So I can kind of, you know, especially on my team, guys I see every day, I kind of go towards them and ask them for advice. But I've definitely leaned on Jalen, too. Shout out to the brother right over there. The Shout out to the brother right there. <laughs> Hey, Cody, Ryan Miller from KSL.com. I'm just curious, what has been the last, what, five days now been like for you after being drafted? Uh, it was kind of a blur, to be honest, especially because, you know, it's a quick turnaround. You know, I just had my first practice. So um, there's only, like, certain parts I feel like you remember. You remember the big things. Like, I remember getting my name called. I remember being with my family. I remember going out to dinner with them and eating. Um, and I really remember enjoying that experience, which was a big thing for me, just because, you know, as soon as that draft is over, it's like, you know, it's a business now and it's go time. So. And I was definitely like went by in a flash, but I definitely enjoyed you know the whole little five days in New York. Please, Sarah Todd, Deseret News. Um, I'm sure that you read, saw a lot of stuff that was happening throughout the whole draft process, and there was a lot of people that were, I guess, curious about on your low volume of shooting if the percentages were real. What was kind of your reaction to hearing, seeing that? It didn't really have an effect on me, just because I know the type of player I am, and I know what I bring to you know my team in Colorado, and also what I'm gonna bring to the Utah Jazz. So. I mean, whatever really people think. I feel like the most important thing is, you know, the guys right here, like people like Will Hardy, Danny Ainge, you know, the guys that have faith and believe in me, my teammates now who have faith and, you know, believe in my abilities. So that's really the biggest thing to me. Cody, Tony Jones from The Athletic. What could, what can you take from your experience at Colorado, you know, to, to help you with the translation to the NBA? and? You know, what were some of that experience, especially with KJ and, and Tristan, that you could take from playing with them to to to, uh, to your translation to the league? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just the adjustment period, just because I had a little bit of adjustment period and going, you know, from high school to Colorado. And, you know, it's going to be the same way going from college to the NBA. is going to be a little bit of adjustment period. So kind of just embracing that, embracing, you know, making mistakes and learning along the way, especially, you know, coming in here 19. So... You know, for me, just really embracing getting better every day, being open to coaching, and obviously, you know, putting in work outside of practice or outside of the lifts. So for me, that's the biggest thing. And then I learned a lot from those guys. Learned a lot from Tad, like, you know, term terminology that we use here. A lot of it we use in Colorado, so I feel like I'm kind of up to speed in that aspect. So, you know, those guys really showed me a lot, and it helped obviously translate to the NBA level. And the altitude. <laughs> and the altitude, yeah. <laughs> no, I felt that today, for sure, so. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Cody, I'm Andy Larson from the Salt Lake Tribune. Uh, good to meet you. When, when we talked to you after the, after the draft, it was right after you drafted and, and you hadn't had the chance really to talk to Will or talk to Justin or the front office yet. What have those conversations been like in the last few days and kind of what have you learned from, from the early talks with them? Uh, just, you know, here to get to work. Now really the draft, where you got drafted, where you came from, none of that really matters at this point. So now it's about, you know, Utah basketball and really buying in every day and getting better. 
I uh, think the biggest thing they told me was just continue to work hard, push myself to the next level. Um, they say, you know, I have an extra gear where I can work even harder and, you know, learn from guys, you know, like Keontae, Colin Sexton, you know, Lori, Kessler, the guys, who, you know, are putting in extra work and have made huge jumps. So for them, it was like really soak up all the knowledge that they're giving you and like find that extra gear to, you know, work even harder. Have you, are, are you, when the schedule comes out, are you going to be circling the OKC games? I might circle one or two, you know. Uh, we get them four times. Yeah, so we get them a couple <laughs> times, but yeah. Definitely take it one game at a time, and then when that game, you know, pops up, we'll deal with it. So What's Playing like your brother growing up, been like, like, are you guys ultra competitive? Either of you go easy on each other? Never go, never go easy. You don't get better that way. So it's definitely super competitive. I think the biggest thing is just because how close our relationship is, we can, you know, go at each other 100% and there'll be no, no backlash, no hard feelings afterwards. We know, you know, we're just trying to get each other better on the court. What are you hoping to show at Summer Leagues? Uh, for me, it's just learning. I'm not really going into Summer League with, like, I want to do this, I want to do that. For me, it's like, all right, I want to go into Summer Leagues. It'll be my first kind of, you know, games playing in the NBA. I want to learn everything I can. Obviously, I want to perform well. But for me, I just want to, you know, go out there and enjoy the experience. Obviously, shot on the defensive end. That's kind of been my focus, just learn the terminology. But for me, it's really like a learning experience and just any way I can get better any knowledge I can get from Summer League and take that, you know, into this upcoming season. That's what that's my plan. Dana Green, ABC4. Um, you weren't here at the Huntsman Center, right, when Colorado played here? Or did you play in that game? No, I, I fractured my orbital before right. that game, yeah. What are your uh, kind of first impressions then of Salt Lake City? Um, what do you know about Jazz fans yeah. and the passion that they bring to that arena every night? I know they're crazy passionate. I think we're talking about it. It's like 290 games, maybe 291 consecutively sold out. So I already know the energy they're going to bring every single game. Every game you know, here feels like game seven just because the atmosphere. So I know that for sure. It kind of reminds me of Boulder, especially like the mountains being, you know, right next to the city. So you always have a nice view. It's really easy to get around. Uh, it's a nice, you know, nice little peaceful town. For me, it's kind of a place where I really lock into basketball and work. So that was the biggest thing for me coming in as a rookie. So, like, I love it out here so far. Cody, David Locke, Jazz Radio. Watching some of your Colorado games, there were an occasional moment where you came off a pin down and burst, got to turn the corner and burst, but more often than not, there was a guy in the middle, pretty big guy. Yeah. If I went back and watched your AAU game or some of your, what, what other parts of your game would I see that maybe I didn't get to see by watching Col you play at Colorado? I mean, really, I was able to showcase everything, you know, that I could bring to the table, and I feel like that's why I'm in this position, especially, you know, I went to a good system that, you know, allowed me to play my game and they highlighted my strengths and also helped me, you know, develop my weaknesses. So for me, I feel like especially going to a school in the system that fit me the best, I was able to kind of showcase my all-around game. Do you have a jersey number in mind or one you want to or think you're going to wear? I'm five, I believe. Yeah, I just came in. Yeah, so there you go. I'm five. I wanted a single digit, yeah, see, she got it. Yeah. I wanted a single digit number, just, you know, I didn't want to, you know, get 91 or you know, 99, so kept, kept it at five. 99 is a J Crowder. Oh, yeah, I can't, can't do that. Cody, Jeremiah Jensen, KSL Sports. I don't know if you have any relationships with any of the players currently on the roster, but there's a lot of young players on this roster. Are you excited to play with some of these guys, and, and, and what are your thoughts about this group and, and how much fun you can have playing with them and kind of growing up together on this roster? Yeah, I think the biggest thing with having a young roster is the locker room is going to be really close. You know, you guys can kind of bond and connect and really, you know, learn with each other as you go out through the season, you know, go out through these next years. So for me, having a young roster, a lot of them I know. Like I know Keontae from AAU, you know Kessler from AAU, played against Isaiah Collier in the Pac-12, played against Kyle in AAU. So already having those connections like allows you to make a really you know close locker room and then that obviously translates to the court so i think not only we're we going to be really good and also you know, learn a lot together but it's going to be fun you know playing basketball with this group of guys it's for uh for justin uh you've dealt with uh, a lot of young players coming in with uh you know, one year of college experience. How does Cody kind of differ from them? He seems mature, seems uh, wiser beyond his years. Um, I think part of it's a credit, first and foremost, to his family. Um, done a great job raising him. Obviously, perspective with his older brother currently in the league. You just don't want to get a chance to get that growing up. It's not like every family that has an NBA player is running around with a very good NBA player who's an older brother or anything else. So I think that gives him a head start. <clears throat> Sorry. I also think he's smart. 
He's good at figuring things out and figuring things out quick. So we've already had conversations, Danny and myself, with Cody and kind of what the initial expectations are. And his perspective is absolutely correct for Summer League. Summer League is about the experience, about learning about the physicality, learning about the speed, and learning about, like, you know, he knows what he needs to work on. We have a, a you know, personalized plan for him that will help him make gains in those things. But a lot of it's just experience to go through it. Play good, play bad, just play hard. And take that and that experience and use that for the rest of the summer to really get ready for what's really important, and that's training camp. So this is an important experience for him, but it's not a be-all, end-all of if he plays good or bad. There's no, I have no expectation about that. All I have an expectation is for him to start connecting with his teammates, our coaches, the program, and it's, it's going to be a fun start.